Drummer Associates developed an automated tote and packaging handling system consisting of a paperless pick to light system, a very narrow aisle pallet rack, and man up fork truck system, a totally automated AGV tugger system, a state of the art battery handling system, and an automated picking, sort, shipping, and return conveyor system for this retail drug chain. The expansion facility is located in Indianapolis. Our project team developed an internal equipment layout, building size, and configuration to support present and projected distribution requirements. How can Tromer Associates help you and your company? Tromer Associates works with you to ensure the material handling solution is implemented smoothly. Checking vendor drawings for compliance with the original design documents eliminates expensive change orders. Their team provides a turnkey solution that allows managers to deal with the daily operations of shipping orders. If you're concerned about making the right and safe decision, we should talk. If this video case study has caught your attention, we ask you to visit our website. These are the stores where it all happens. When a Super X or Hook store places an order, we fill it and ship the order out. So this is it, HSI's Midwest Distribution Center. We've got about 600,000 pieces we're going to pick tonight for the stores. Very, very busy place. You've got about a million square feet under roof here, and it's got the latest in material handling technology built into the building. We've got a state-of-the-art building for the 1990s with the capability to make enhancements well into the next century. So this is how you fill the orders. Tell me, how does the store order make it to the warehouse? Comes into the computer center. It's Rick Louder. Come on. This place is so big, there's about a half a mile here. It takes bicycles, golf carts, even trams to move people around. Hello, Rick. Hey, Skip. How are you doing today? Just fine. How are you? Good. Rick, meet Marcy. Hi. Hi, Marcy. Marcy's on a tour of the distribution center today, and uh, she'd like for you to explain how the orders come in from the stores. Oh, okay, Marcy. That's a pretty simple process. The stores send the orders here to the computer center on modem. The, mo the information is collected from a PC. It's downloaded here to the mainframe every 10 minutes. The mainframe contains the information at that point on size, weight, and the order quantity the store wants, and we're able to get the order then ready for the warehouse. So, is that how you determine which order will actually get picked first? No, actually, that's determined by when the orders are being loaded on the truck. That's traffic. Come on. Bye. Bye. Hi, ladies. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? This is Marcy. Hi, Marcy. I'm She's Jane. She's visiting us today, and she'd like to hear all about traffic. Okay. This is the traffic office, and this is where the truck routes are generated on a daily basis. We pick about 180 stores a night here, and each store's order is downloaded from a computer center to the traffic office computer each morning. The truck routes are based upon each store's location, it's geocoded into the computer, each store's particular delivery parameters, and each store's order size for that day. Once the orders have been appropriately manipulated, the information is uploaded into the mainframe and the documentation for picking is generated. The truck routes that are generated this morning determines the way that the orders are picked this evening. So now that the order is printed, uh, where does it go? It goes to the control office. We call it the order shack. Come on. Hi, Vicki. How are you doing today? Meet Marcy. She's on a tour of the warehouse today, and uh, we'd like to know what's going on here in the order shack today. This is the control office, but it's known as the order shack. Um, here's where, when the computer room is finished printing the orders, they send them out to us, and we divide them into the major picking areas. They have the store numbers on them. We have the license plates, selection documents, price pick, and case pick. These have the uh, picking station numbers and the store numbers. They're divided to be sent out to the major picking areas in the warehouse. You can now come and pick up your second wave of orders in the control office. So what you're saying is that one order could be broken up and sent to different areas within the warehouse. That's exactly right. 
Now that you've seen how some of the stores order their, their merchandise, let's go take a look and see how the merchandise comes into the warehouse. That's receiving. We're in the receiving area. All the products we get in throughout the warehouse come through these doors. The trucks are backed in and the products pulled off and separated onto skids that go to specific departments throughout the warehouse. But before they go to those departments, they go out to our check-in area. Hi. Hi. Welcome to check-in. This is where all the freight comes in. We uh, will take the merchandise. We'll make sure it's the right quantity on our purchase order. Mm -hmm. And then we put a location on it. And from there, it goes out to reserve storage or to a picking location. What's that? That's our cubic scan. We'll take our box, we'll put it on there, it'll give us a weight and a cubic size, which will in turn let us know uh, how much space is needed for a picking location or uh, when they're picking orders, how many baskets is gonna be needed for that order. Where does it go from here? Well, it depends on what it is. Ordinarily, it goes to reserve storage. Some locations are moved with forklifts. If it has to travel some distance, it'll probably be put on the tugger. We use the LXE system to scan the product in the reserve storage location to marry the two together and then transmit the information to our mainframe. This is how we keep track of the product throughout the warehouse. Where is it packed in the totes? This Marty is a flow module. It's probably the most basic type of picking area in the warehouse. And it's called a flow module because it's, the merchandise is stocked from the back and flows towards the center. Is everything picked on a flow module just like this? No, there are other types of picking areas in the warehouse. There's nine conveyables, there's RX, and there's cigarettes. Hi, Mike. That's Would good. you mind telling Marcy what's unique about RX? Sure. Hi, Marcy. Hi. Up in the RX department, we pick orders a little differently than we do out in the warehouse because of the cost of the merchandise that we handle. It's very important that we're accurate with what we pick. We use a paperless system called Light Pick. What we do is we receive a download, the uh, information that uh, is held in the system is activated, and we scan the barcode label with the scan gun. The lights will light up, corresponding with what merchandise that we have to pick. The quantity that we have to pick is displayed here on this board. We can adjust quantities using the keypad. After we fill the order, we print a packing slip with the information that's withheld in the system on what we confirm that we pick. We take the packing slip, put it in the tote, place it on the conveyor, shipment to the dock. We even have an area where pharmaceuticals are broken down from bulk quantities into smaller units. Hey Paul, how Hi. are you? Good to see you. Hi. What's unique about the uh, tobacco area from the rest of the warehouse, uh, our orders are filled over there behind us. They travel around a conveyor system and then enter this area behind us. In that area, each and every order before uh, proceeding any farther is uh, inspected for quality. Uh, also, they uh, inspect it for the right count of cigarettes, ensuring the uh, customer that they're getting what they order. At that point, then the cigarettes travel on to these tax stamping machines behind us. At that point, each store is receiving their own individual state tax stamp. Since most of the merchandise is picked in an area like this, do you want to go up and see how we do it? Yes, I would. Okay. Hi. Hi. This is uh, Flow Module 2. This is where the order fillers pick the merchandise that is sent out to the stores. The order filler usually picks up two orders. One order on the way down the aisle and one pick up on the way back. The price marking document contains the location and the quantity to be picked. As the item is picked, the price ticket is placed on it and then placed into the tote. This provides an important service so we can help out our stores. Each license plate contains a barcode label and a store label. 
The barcode label is read by the scanner in the sortation platform. The store label is placed on the front. Now if you want to see a really big flow module that's busy, let's go on over to flow module 7. This is Flow Module 7. It is the biggest flow module in the distribution center. It is twice as long as any other flow module and it's three stories high. It's not uncommon to have 50 order fillers in here at one time. So where did the totes go from here? They're on their way to the sortation platform. Come on. Okay, Marcy, what we have here is the merge platform. What happens here is once your departments have finished packing their, their totes and have them sealed, they'll put them on the line, and 18 departments come here to the merge station where they're sorted, and they go down the various lines that you will see, and they go to the trucks. Marcy, here we have our scanner. Our scanner scans about 75 pieces per minute. Uh, Every package that comes through has barcodes on the top with information on what store and where it's going, which tells the scanner which line to ship it down. Once it comes down the shipping lines, we have shoes that push the freight on down to six lines, which see their way out to the trucks. This is the shipping dock. We have 25 dock doors and six conveyor lines to load roughly 40 trucks per night. We load 80% of our merchandise coming down these conveyor lines. Our other 20% we load in a different way. Um, we load on two shifts, probably from 4 o'clock in the afternoon and it goes all the way through 8.30 the next morning so that we can get all of our trucks out at their scheduled time. What about returns? Oh, I can show you that. Hop in. Hi, Marcy. I'm Dwayne Hastings. This is the return goods stripping dock. Once the trucks come back from the stores, the returns are loaded on the conveyor. They go overhead to the return goods sorter. From there, they're sorted out by different departments, sent to the scan lines where they're sorted out by vendor. Uh, once the vendors have uh, been notified, we charge that merchandise back. Yeah, there's somebody else I'd like you to meet. Hi there. Hi. This is Store Support. We answer many calls throughout the day and evening. Uh, we're here to answer any calls that might arise from the stores. We do answer all questions. If we do not have a direct answer for you, we will find an answer for you. That's it. Ready? Thanks for joining us at the Midwest Distribution Center. We're working for you. If you have any questions, feel free to join us one day or night.